Hello, this is Professor Kitch, and welcome to part three of my Triaxial Consolidated Undrained Test webcast series. In part three, we are going to cover how to hook up the cell and perform the consolidation part of the test. So let's get started. So here I have my specimen that I've just got placed in a cell, and now I'm going to show how it gets hooked up to the panel. I already have this line that's connected to the valve at the base of the specimen hooked up to the panel. We had that hooked up when we were saturating the base of the panel. Now I need to hook up two other lines. I need to hook up the central line here that, that goes to the cell itself, the water that's going to go outside the specimen, and I need to hook that up to one of the panels. So I'm going to hook that up to this particular column. And then temporarily, I'm going to need to have the drainage line from the top of the specimen over here hooked up to the panel. This will come off later, but when I'm setting up the panel, it needs to be there. So now that I've got these hooked up, um, I'll go to filling up the specimen and show you, filling up the cell and show you how that works. All right, well, the first step is to fill up the cell outside the specimen with water. So to do that, I have this line hooked up to my fill line. I need to put a vent line in the top of this so that this is vented to the atmosphere so there's no pressure on it. And then I'm going to open up my fill line here and you'll see water start flowing into the cell here. Now this is filling up outside the specimen and we're going to let that fill up. we've got the cell full. All right, now I need to transfer this line from the fill line back to my cell control line here. And now the next step is to get all this air out of the top lines on the specimen, and that's what we're going to do next. Well, now I've got my cell all hooked up to the panel, and I'm ready to bleed the air out of the top of the cell. So I have a very small pressure on the outside. I've got about 4 psi on the cell on the outside to hold the membrane against there. I've got about 3.5 psi at the bottom of the specimen in order to just make sure that that stays saturated. And then I'm, I've got uh, this valve connected to the panel and it's got, again, got about three and a half PSI on this panel. So I'm going to open this valve on, on this side. So that's the other valve connected to the top, and it's open to the atmosphere now. Now I'm going to open this valve, and then that'll allow the water to flow through here, and it'll push all the air bubbles through here, and the water will come out here, and I'll watch it come out here until I've got a clean stream and there's no bubbles coming through. So that's what I'm going to do now. So I'm going to open this panel. Watch it come through, and I see there's some more bubbles coming through. So I'm just looking for bubbles. And when I don't see any more bubbles coming through, I'll shut it off. All right. All right, that looks pretty good. I don't see any more bubbles coming through. So now I have all the air out of the lines at the top. I got the air out of the lines at the bottom. And so um, now I can... We, I can leave this valve off. We're not going to need this valve anymore. Um, I'll shut it off here at the panel. I'll disconnect this right here. I want to shut this off. Oh, no. I Take that back. There's one more thing I need to bleed on here, and I forgot about it. I need to put my pore pressure gauge on here and bleed that out, too. So let me do that next. Well, now I've got my pore pressure transducer. I need to hook that up over to here on the cell because this is what we're going to use to measure the pore pressure inside the specimen. And so this is pore pressure um, transducer has a little bleed valve on here. So first I'm going to hook it on. To this column. Snug it on there so it's tight. And now again, I'm going to put a little bit of pressure on this side. And then I'm going to open this bleed valve to make sure I got all the air out through there. So I'm going to loosen the bleed valve. And I'll open this up. And we'll see just a little bit of water dripping out of here. Okay. 
guess it would help if I open up this side. There we go. I'm going to look to make just we're just going to let that water drip out for a little while so that any air that was in there is gone. That should be fine. We'll tighten this down. All right. So now I should have my system completely bled. And now I can remove this line. All right, so now I have the specimen in there. The lines are saturated at the top and the bottom, and I'm ready to go on to consolidating the specimen. I'm getting ready to consolidate the sample, but before I do that, I need to make a, a measurement so that I can be sure I'll know the height of the sample after consolidation. Right now, we know the height of the sample because we measured it with our calipers. But as soon as I start consolidating, the sample is going to get a little smaller and it's going to get a little shorter. And I need to know when I start my shear test what the height of the sample is. So in order to figure out what the height of the sample is after consolidation, what I'm going to do is push the piston down into the top cap till it hits the bottom of the top cap. And then I'm going to measure this distance, this ex piston extension. And then after the sample through consolidating, I'll do the same thing. I'll push it back in and I'll measure this distance again. It'll be slightly shorter. And that's how much I know the sample is shortened during consolidation. So let's do that measurement of the piston extension here. I'm going to hold on to the piston and loosen this. And I'm just going to push it. I don't want to load the specimen. I just want to push it till I feel it touch the top of the loading cap. So now it's fully seated in the loading cap. And I'll just take my calipers here. And I'll just use the inside part of the calipers here to measure this piston extension. I'm going to record that on my data sheet. All right, so now I know the piston extension. Now I'm going to loosen that and let it come up a little bit just so it's not touching the top cap and I don't have any problems there. All right, and now I'm ready to go on and, and consolidate the specimen. All right, before I start my consolidation, I want to make sure everything's set up properly. So we're going to check out the valve position here. So here I have this line is going to be my back pressure line connected to the specimen. That valve is open and it's connected to the bottom. This valve at the bottom is also open and this valve at the top is open. So the top of this, the bottom of the specimen and the top of the specimen are connected together. So there's the same pore pressure in the top of the bottom. This valve is closed and this line is connected to my cell pressure here. So now I'm going to consolidate the specimen and in order to do that, I need to put a differential pressure on it. I want the pressure in the cell to be higher than the back pressure in the specimen. We have the pore pressure on the inside. We're going to have the total stress on the outside from the cell. And the difference between those two will be the effective stress on the specimen. Now this particular specimen, I know I want to consolidate to 30 PSI. And so I will need to put a back pressure on the inside and the cell pressure on the outside such that the difference is 30. So I'm going to start with 50 PSI on the back pressure side, which means I want 80 PSI on the cell pressure in order to have a net difference of 30 or have an effective consolidation stress of 30 PSI. Now in order to do that, uh, I'm going to adjust these regulators at the top of each of these in order to get the correct pressure. Now this is the one that's on the cell, so that one needs to be set to 80 PSI. So I'm going to open that uh, to the pressure gauge, which you can't see here. I'll put that in inset. And I'm going to adjust that until I have 80 PSI. And now I'm going to adjust this cell. This is the one connected to the specimen bottom. I'm going to adjust that one until it's got 50 PSI on it. Right. I'm going to record those two. The cell pressure, again, is 80.0 psi. The back pressure is 50.1 psi. That's close enough, which gives me a confining stress of 29.9 psi. All right. These valves are closed right now. So what I'm going to do in a moment is I'm going to open those valves. And that's going to suddenly put 80 PSI on the outside of the specimen and 50 on the inside. And that should cause the specimen to start to consolidate. Now this valve will be open. 
So this, this drain line here is connected to the pipette, and when I put that confining stress on there, this pipette should start going up as the water is pushed out of the specimen. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take readings of the volume of water coming out of the specimen as a function of time, just like you would do a regular consolidation test. I have to do this manually, so I'll take a reading at, if I can, I'll take a reading at 30 seconds and at one minute, two minutes, four minutes, etc., and I'll just watch how much water comes out of the specimen, and that's how we're going to measure the consolidation. So I've got to get that all set up and ready to go. It looks like I'll start that at, uh, I've got a clock going over here so I can see the exact time. And let me check my current pipette reading. It's reading 18.3. I'm going to start in five seconds. All right, I'm going to open those up. Okay, this is all looking good so far. And I got time to take a 15 second reading. Point four. I'm just watching my clock over here. I'm going to get a 30 second reading. Seventeen point seven. I get my one minute reading and then I'll talk to you. Okay, I'm recording my consolidation data. So I'm going to record this uh, consolidation data just like you would for a one-dimensional consolidation, except this is isotropic three-dimensional consolidation. And we're going to use that to figure out how long it takes the soil to the specimen to consolidate. That's important for when we run the shear test. We'll talk about that when we run the shear test. So this specimen is up and running and consolidating, and there's a little bit of back pressure saturation going on. We'll talk about that a little later. And so we just have to sit here and wait, let it consolidate, and when it's through consolidating, we'll check the saturation level, and we may have to wait for the back pressure saturation to go a little higher. So that's as far as we're going to get with this today. Hope you enjoyed having me in the lab. Take care. Well, welcome to the Geotech Lab and our track seal consolidated undrained test. Last time we were here, we were assembling one of the specimens, and then we started the consolidation process by putting a cell pressure on it and a lower uh, back pressure on the inside so that the specimen could consolidate. Right now you see I've got four different specimens here on the table. Uh, they're pretty close to being ready to test. Uh, they've been saturating for several days and what we want to do now is to see whether or not they're completely saturated. The consolidation process is done on each of them and the question now is are they completely saturated? In order to determine whether the specimen is saturated, we're going to do what's called a B value test on the specimen. And we're going to be working with this first specimen here in cell number one. This specimen is currently consolidating to a, an effective stress of 20 psi. The way this is hooked up to the panel right now, this particular section on the panel is hooked up to the cell pressure. That's the, the stress outside the specimen. And this panel position right here is hooked up to the back pressure or the pore pressure inside the specimen. We have also have a pore pressure transducer right here. That happens to be hooked up to this readout now. We also have a pore pressure transducer on the top of the cell, but we're not using it right now. So this pore pressure transducer is reading the pore pressure inside the cell, and you say it says it's equal to 59.9 psi. These regulators up here are controlling the source of the stress on this, on this specimen. This first one here, which is the stress outside this, this specimen, the cell pressure, you can't see the readout on it, but it's, uh, I've just opened that up to the gauge, and it's reading 80 psi. And this is the back pressure being supplied inside the cell. This is the pore pressure inside the cell. And when I open that one up, it's reading 60 psi. So on this side, I'm reading 60 psi in the cell right here, and here I'm reading 59.9. It's just a little difference in the calibration factors between the two gauges. 
So I have the same, I'm reading the same thing. So right now, the cell pressure outside the specimen is 80 PSI. That's the total stress that's on this, from the cell pressure that's pushing in on the specimen. So it's got a total stress on the outside of 80 PSI. The pore pressure on the inside of the specimen is right at 60 PSI. That's the pore pressure on the inside of the specimen. So the difference between those two is the effective stress, which the specimen's being subject to. So it's subject to a 20 PSI effective stress. Now the way we're going to do the B value test is we're going to first turn off both the, the, these lines. We're going to turn off the line to the cell pressure and we're going to turn off the, the drainage line to the back pressure inside the specimen. When I do that, nothing should change inside the specimen because I have all these valves turned off. The cell pressure is going to remain at 80 PSI and the back pressure is going to remain at 60 PSI or 59.9 PSI. Then I'm going to adjust the pressure at the top of this burette. I'm going to adjust the total stress. I'm going to change it by 10 PSI. I'm going to add an additional 10 PSI. I'm going to bring this up to 90 PSI. I'll also then bring the back pressure burette up to 70 PSI. So the difference of those two from 90 to 70 will still be 20 PSI because I don't want to change the effective stress on the specimen. So I'm going to make those changes, but nothing's going to happen in here because these valves are going to be closed. And then what I'm going to do is I'm going to open the valve to the cell. So I'm suddenly going to go from 80 PSI to 90 PSI. There's going to be a 10 PSI change. And we're going to observe from this readout what happens to the back pressure inside the specimen. If the specimen's totally saturated, since the water's incompressible and the soil minerals are incompressible, the only thing that can happen, since we we're going to have the drainage valve closed, so no water can flow out or no water can flow in, and so there can't be any change in volume, and since there can't be any change in volume, there can't be any additional increase in effective stress, and so all the, all the additional stress, the, the entire additional 10 PSI that I apply to the specimen should be taken by the pore pressure. That's if the specimen is 100% saturated, because if it's 100% saturated, there can't be any volume change. Now, if the specimen is less than 100% saturated, then there's going to start to be a little bit of consolidation inside the specimen, and the, the change in pore pressure will be less than, on the inside, will be less than the change in the, the cell, cell pressure on the outside. So what I'm looking for is that the change in the pore pressure on the inside is exactly the same as the change in cell pressure on the outside. And the ratio of those two, the ratio of the change in the pore pressure inside the specimen to the total stress change on the outside of the specimen is called the B value. If the B value is equal to 1, the changes are the same, it's 100% saturated. If the B value is less than 1, it's less than 100% saturated. So that's what we're going to do is, again, we're going to close the valves, change the, the cell pressure by 10 PSI, change the back pressure by 10 PSI. We're going to open the cell pressure real quickly without opening the drainage line. We're going to see if we get a 10 PSI change in there. We're going to take about two minutes worth of readings to see how it stabilizes. Once we've taken our two minutes worth of readings, we'll be able to calculate a B value. Then I'm going to open up the drainage line and make sure that the back pressure is 20 PSI less than the cell pressure so I don't cause any additional consolidation. So what we'll have done is basically bump the back pressure and the cell pressure each up by 10 PSI at that point. And if there was any air left in the system, the higher pore pressure inside the specimen will allow some more of that air to dissolve into the water because at the higher, at the higher stress, the air is more soluble in the water. So that's what we're going to do. Let's get set up to do that. All right, now we're ready to start our B value check on this first specimen. The first thing I'm going to do is close the valve to the cell and I'm going to close the drainage valve. So there's no fluid flowing in or out of the specimen right now. Nothing's going to change in the specimen right now because I have these valves all turned off. The next thing I'm going to do is adjust the pressure in both the cell and the back pressure. I'm going to increase them both by 10 psi. So right now the cell pressure is 80 psi. I'm going to increase that to 90. I realize you can't see the gauge. Right, I have 90 psi. Uh, right here on top of this burette right now. And I'm going to increase the back pressure from 60 to 70. All right, double check that. I have 90 PSI here on the cell position. I have 70 PSI on in the back pressure. So, uh, 90 PSI in the cell position, 70 PSI in the back pressure. 
Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to check my clock over here in just a second. So I am going to open up the cell pressure. So I'm going to suddenly increase the, the total stress on the specimen by 10 psi. We're going to observe this. We're going to see if this jumps from 59.9 to 69.9. If we did, then, then the change in the pore pressure will be the same as the change in the cell pressure and we'll have 100% saturation. So let's find out. I've got to look at the clock and we're ready to go and bang. I'm going to read every 10 seconds. Okay, 68.9, so not quite. And 69.0. Sixty nine point zero So it's staying at sixty nine point zero. I'm going to wait a few more seconds to see if it changes. If it doesn't, it doesn't seem to be changing, so it seems to be stabilized. So it's sixty nine point zero. Now I, that's an extra one psi effective stress on it. So now I'm going to open the back pressure line. To bring that up to 70. So now the back pressure is at 70. So now I have um, 90 psi on the cell and 70 on the back pressure. So I haven't changed the effective stress. I did change it that one minute for just a little while. And so the change in um, the change in the total stress was 10 psi, but the change in the back pressure here was 9.1 psi. It started at 59.9 and went up to 69. Okay, so let's determine the B value for this test. It's a really simple calculation. I changed the cell pressure by 10 psi. So the total stress change was 10 psi. Then I measured the pore pressure change. The pore pressure went from 59.9 up to 69, so it went up 9.1 psi. It didn't go up 10. So the B value is 9.1 divided by 10.0, or the B value is 0.91. So we're not 100% saturated, we're over 90% saturated. That's uh, pretty good for a uh, class, classroom test. We'd like to be up to like above 95% saturation. We'll leave this specimen here to saturate for another day or so to see if we can get to a, a higher degree of saturation. And we'll check the B value one more time just before we actually start shearing the specimen.